Mangroves are the best. They are one of a kind species, uniquely adapted to coastal ecosystems in tropical and subtropical regions of the world. Mangroves are a woody species of plants that grow in regions of high salinity, extreme high and low tides, strong winds, and high temperatures. Mangroves live where no other plants are strong enough to survive, the intertidal zones between the land and the ocean. Mangroves are very important for the planet. It's estimated that mangroves provide at least 1.6 billion in ecosystem services each year. Many coastal communities benefit from mangroves because of their ability to prevent soil erosion, provide protection from storms and flooding, create a habitat rich in biodiversity, while also serving as both a source and sink for nutrients and sediments for other marine habitats like seagrasses and coral reefs. The ability of mangroves to sequester carbon in it is an increasingly essential service provided by mangroves. It's estimated that mangroves sequester up to 25.5 million tons of carbon each year and provide more than 10% of essential organic carbon to the global oceans. Sonia Raysha graffiti is listed on the IUCN Red List as a critically endangered species of mangrove that populates the western Indo-Pacific marine ecoregion of South Asia. Sonia Raysha graffiti and mangroves in general are well adapted to coastal ecosystems, though no adaptation can protect the species from the constant bombardment of human-induced threats like climate change, aquaculture farms, and general development. The goal of this conservation plan is to formulate a detailed protection plan that will ensure the survival of the remaining individuals well into the future. Sonia Raysha graffiti is a species of true mangroves known as a halophyte, a unique species of plant that is adapted to living in highly saline waters, functioning normally despite living in a difficult environment. Halophytes exclude salt from the root system and excrete excess salts through salt glands and bladders in their leaves. They also prevent anoxia in the plant system, a deficiency where oxygen does not reach the necessary tissues in the plant. Mangroves need oxygen just like any other species of plant to survive. They, had, they have adapted by developing a root system composed of pneumatophores. These function as a breathing organ for the species so that it is able to survive the anaerobic soil conditions present in the coastal marine habitat. So Eurasia graffiti's pneumatophores are cone-shaped breathing roots that grow from the root base and have small openings in the bark to take in oxygen and store it when the tide covers the aerial root. So Eurasia graffiti are scattered throughout southern Asia many countries bordering the Indian Ocean and the Western Indo-Pacific Marine Ecoregion. Currently, there are four countries that have individuals of Sonia Raysha graffiti living within their borders, India, Malaysia, Myanmar, and Thailand. There are less than 500 individuals of Sonia Raysha graffiti in India. They can be found rarely on the muddy banks of rivers in the Sundarbans and Odisha, both on the East Coast. Sonia Raysha graffiti can also be found here, in the middle of the Bay of Bengal in the Indian Ocean, on the Andaman and Nicobar Islands. The Andaman and Nicobar Islands are home to 64 of the elusive trees. There is also a protected area on the Arawadi Delta of Myanmar, known as the Minmalakun. This is the center of the world's largest population of Sonia Raysha graffiti, with at least 1,188 individuals making the Delta home. Other than these locations, the species is found very sporadically throughout the coasts of Thailand and Malaysia. Shown here is the largest continuous mangrove forest in the world and home to a few Sonia Raysha graffiti, the Sundarbans. This massive plot of mangroves is formed by the deltas of three rivers, the Ganges, the Brahmaputra, and the Meghna on the Bay of Bengal in eastern India. There are numerous threats to all species of mangroves. The number one threat to Sonia Raysha graffiti are humans and their activities. People will do anything to make money, including destroying mangroves. Since 1950, India alone has lost nearly 50% of all species of mangroves within its borders. Over the past 60 years, Sonia Raysha graffiti has lost 80% of its species, with its patchy range to make room for aquaculture, farms, and fish ponds. Another major threat is extensive coastal development that wipes out vast systems of mangroves. The type of development depends on the region and the country, but usually includes the removal of mangroves for shrimp farms, coconut plantations, fish ponds, rice production, salt pans, and commercial logging for firewood and charcoal. 
Mangroves have destroyed to develop urban and industrial areas, including the construction of roads, ports, airports, housing, shopping center, resorts, and other buildings. With the advance of a civilization come other threats such as pollution from sewage, solid waste, siltation, oil, and runoff from agriculture and urban areas. Climate change is another human-induced threat to mangroves. Increasing temperatures, increasing levels of greenhouse gases, increasing intensity of storms, changes in ocean circulation patterns, rising sea levels, and changes in the salinity of the ocean are all problems that mangroves face with changes in climate on the planet Earth. Finally, there are a slew of natural threats to Sony racial graffiti, including cyclones, hurricanes, and tsunamis, which will only intensify as the effects of climate change grow stronger. Don't let climate change get you down. Stakeholders are the owners and workers of various agriculture businesses like shrimp farms, rice paddies, fish ponds, fishermen, and salt pans, general contractors, urban developers, NGOs focused on mangrove conservation, governments at all levels, and the people that live in each country. The people who make a living by catching fish are especially dependent on mangroves. Without mangroves, the fish populations decline and the people who fish for a living have nothing to catch and no money to support themselves or the local economy. People all around the world should consider themselves stakeholders when it comes to the issue of conserving mangroves. There are a few international treaties and agreements that offer some protection to mangroves. However, there are no specific conservation plans to protect Sony Eurasia graffiti. These treaties and international conventions include the Ramsar Convention, UNESCO, the Convention on the Prevention of Marine Pollution, CITES, or the Convention on International Trade in Endangered Species, the International Tropical Timber Agreement, and the Convention on Biological Diversity. None of these provide legal protection to mangroves and none of them address conservation, preservation, or management of any specific species, much less Sonia Eurasia graffiti. The current trend of mangrove destruction shows that exploitation continues despite the presence of these laws and treaties. The Ramsar Convention states its mission as the conservation and wise use of all wetlands through local and national actions and the international cooperation as a contribution towards achieving sustainable development throughout the world. The Ramsar site on the Arawadi Delta in Myanmar, Mimalakun, is home to the largest population of Sony Racial Graffiti in the world and just recently received this designation as a Ramsar protected area. This happened just last year on February 2nd, 2016, or World Wetlands Day. In a perfect world, every remaining individual of Sony Racial Graffiti would be found, observed, and protected in full force from any future threats. A Ramsar designation for each remaining individual of the species would be nice, though more action than that is needed for this extraordinary ocean tree. The new conservation plan for the species Sonia Racial Graffiti will implement a six-part plan. Rise up. Replanting, integration, stewardship, education, understanding, protection. There needs to be extensive action dedicated to the cultivation and breeding of Sonia Racial Graffiti. Seeds will be collected from plants in the wild and grown in a laboratory to expand the numbers of the species. Plants will be created and then transported to locations that support the growth of the species. Bamboo fences will be placed as a barrier in front of the young trees to add extra protection from the sea and the plant will flourish in new locations with happy fish and happy people taking care of the mangroves. People who live close to Sony Racial Graffiti will need to integrate sustainable practices into their daily activities. Sustainable aquaculture farms that are built with the mangroves instead of destroying them will benefit everyone and every organism in these ecosystems. Designated zones of Sony Racial Graffiti will have village councils formed for the sustainable management and conservation of the species. The people in these villages and towns will carefully and responsibly manage these protected conservation areas. The sense of ownership will give the people a reason to fight for the mangroves. The Rise Up Plan will empower local communities and other stakeholders to ensure the protection of Sonia Racia Graffiti, making all accountable for the results of this stewardship. Restoration of mangroves will protect the people and land from cyclones, supercyclones, and tsunamis, which are very common in southern Asia. In addition, it will help in increased fish, crab population, and general biodiversity. 
Starting at a young age, Mangrove education will be the centerpiece of local schools. Where new populations of Sonia Racial Graffiti are planted and others already exist, the curriculum of the educational system will teach the students about living with mangroves and why they are so beneficial. Hopefully this will help to shift the paradigm from one of controlling nature with aquaculture and the destruction of mangroves to a new one where society lives in harmony with nature and mangroves. The new curriculum and new ways of life will hopefully result in a reduction of mangrove overuse and the creation of new mangrove forests. There will be a presentation presented to local villagers and residents of, local, of areas in close proximity to habitats containing Sonia Eurasia graffiti. There will be a pamphlet distributed to the proprietors of aquaculture industry. All of the sections of the Rise Up Conservation Plan for the species Sonia Eurasia graffiti work together to protect a critically endangered species. Something needs to be done. And it needs to be done now. A new nonprofit organization will be formed for Rise Up dedicated solely to the purpose of conserving Sun Eurasia Graffiti. There will be several fundraising campaigns to help finance the cost of these initiatives. A Rise Up and Safe Sun Eurasia Graffiti t shirt and coloring book will be sold around the world to help raise money. In addition, there will be monthly spaghetti dinners dedicated to raising money for the, the species and Rise Up. Sonia Racia Graffiti is a beautiful species of mangrove that needs to be protected and conserved just because it is an amazing organism that survives and lives on the fringe. Mangroves offer humans protection from devastating storms and flooding. We should return the favor. Everyone needs to protect and conserve the mangrove. There are organizations dedicated to conserving mangroves in southern Asia, but there needs to be a conservation plan and program dedicated to this specific species. Ultimately, these are only ideas on a piece of digital paper for a research project in conservation biology. There needs to be real world solutions in order to make real change and take care of a critically endangered species of mangrove, the Sun Eurasia Graffiti. <laughs>